Mosmish, Acer Pennsylvanicum, just come closer. Uh, is called, is striped maple. Uh, look at that down here. Look at that, what's happening from probably like ice damage or snow damage. Look at the way it started to grow, how cool. But yeah, it's called straight maple because it's got all these blue lines. Uh, in the spring and in the summer, uh, these lines are gonna open right up and you're gonna see bright blue lines. Uh, not a lot of people know notice striped maple because it's got great big broad leaves that look like duck feet they taught me that on chimney sing <laughs> they got it's got these big broad leaves that hide the tree so you so you never really get a chance to look at the bark uh so you could be passing striped maple uh your whole life and never really get the opportunity to see it uh because in the winter those blue lines will will sort of go away and then they'll come back in the summer and just be like really striking uh, so the bark from this is what we use for medicine and the trees that you pick are just smaller ones you just get like thumb size so you just get small little thumb size trees like this uh, the reason why you get them small like that is because they're not um, uh, they're not responsible for reproduction they're not making seeds and all of these things uh, it actually regarding sustainability one really neat thing about striped maple is that it's really notorious for making empty seeds what you need to do is you need to tease the area a little bit you need to take a couple of the trees and all of the trees are going to communicate to one another and be like hey somebody's bothering me and then what they're going to do is uh, uh be more scared and they'll be a little bit on their toes and they're going to want to leave uh, so the following year the trees that are bigger the, the not the ones that we're picking the trees that are bigger are going to say hey okay we need to fill all these seed pods full of seeds and so uh so you when you come out here you could sort of stimulate that a little bit and help more uh uh striped maple uh to spread around <laughs> yeah so uh uh that's all not not too much uh to identify just like every other maple the branches are opposite it tends to be a little bit darker and it's got the bright blue lines uh the buds are going right now so now is like the absolute perfect time to pick it it's just in this budding stage this is actually when the plant is the most potent when there's the most nutrients going through the bark you're not gonna it, you you can but uh um it, it's gonna be a less potent medicine when all of the energy is in the leaf and in the reproductive cycle it responsible for the seeds and everything like that so now is the perfect time to get it and so real simple the way that you do it so just bring the camera over here wow hey that's from uh barren strawberry okay so come over here uh real easy the way that you cut it is you just you could just sort of bend the tree and when you bend the tree, you make you make some tension in the bend, and then you just push into that, into all that tension, and it just pops. It should just pop. Uh, and it should be really easy to get. Don't bend the tree and don't saw it. Don't go, don't, that's not what, that's not, uh, you, you, you're gonna be putting too much pressure and you're gonna get cut. Put some tension and just uh, push the knife gently in, and it's just gonna snap. Uh, one thing to do when you're out in the bush too, is to just uh, knock off all of the big, uh, uh, all of the big, all, all the little branches, because you're not gonna want, you're not gonna be scraping the bark off of, off of those little branches when you get home. They're just gonna be there making a mess. Your wife's gonna get mad. Be Poking like, your eye out. You never even clean your messes. Stuff like that, you know. So you're just gonna wanna leave all those branches there. Also, what's gonna happen too, when you just take it off like this, uh, just the, uh, leaving a little bit there, the tree has an opportunity to clone itself <laughs> and to just sprout, sprout up again. Sometimes there might be a couple clones. Uh, so this one is a little bit too big, but so you could see on this one, maybe even more so just because it's light, uh, is, uh, <laughs> is the green color. Uh, um, it's, it's green. The branches get a little bit more red and certainly the buds and the leaf are uh, quite red. Uh, but yeah, that's... Uh, oh, look at this one. You can see the stripes real good over here. Look. look at that one. There, you can see the stripes. 
And you could see uh, another characteristic thing about striped maple is that uh, it's going to have um, uh, these these sort of, uh, I don't know, kind of like, almost like camouflage. You know, you see that camouflage sometimes? These patches that are a little bit lighter. Uh, it's kind of interesting the way that it does this. You can see these ones on this side of the road are a lot warmer, so they're, they're uh, starting to wake up and become a little bit more vibrant before those ones. Uh, but yeah, when you come get them, you just get the uh, smaller ones. Okay, so I just found, I just found, we just started walking a little bit more back towards the vehicle. I found a whole bunch. So I'm just gonna, uh, I just wanna show you how easy it is, uh, how easy it is to get a good handful. And then, uh, and then just another sustainability piece. Uh, but, so come over here. You could see, stay back there, could you? You could see uh, with this patch here, these are probably all clones. They're probably all uh, part of the same tree. You can see they're all sort of clumped into one area. If I follow that down, they're probably all coming from the same tree. And so what you want to see is you want to see this big one uh, is probably going to be the one that is uh, is going to be seeding the, the best. It's probably the one that's getting the most nutrients. Uh, most of these trees were probably here around the same time. Uh, the, so the, uh, but uh, this one is going to be the one that uh, that everyone is focusing the energy on. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Uh, so what I wanted to show you is that you could help with this situation right here and and take a couple of them. So you could just bend it. And so I got an axe now. Uh, you just bend it over a little bit and then just tap it. Uh, uh, bend it over. Just tap it. Uh, I don't want to be hitting rocks. Cause then I'm gonna have to watch Caleb so I can learn how to sharpen axes. So I bend it down uh, and then just tap it and it should just pop. Uh, these little ones too, might as well take those cause they're just gonna be suckers. Uh, if anybody who has ever had a garden before, you understand what I mean, have little suckers. And then, uh, but yeah, and then you just leave the one. That one's gonna do so much better. It's gonna have so much more nutrients all to itself. Our metabolism program, we teach about diabetes and uh, diabetes is really simple. Uh, we spend most of that program teaching about how to heal the damage that diabetes has done. And so the, uh, one part of your body that diabetes has, uh, is, is, is very destructive to is your vascular system. This is why like with diabetics, you hug a diabetic too hard and they're all bruised. <laughs> Their blood vessels are not in good shape. Uh, glucose is extremely toxic to blood vessels and they lack the mechanisms to spit the sugar out. And so when the sugar is in, just wait baby, when the sugar is in the blood vessel cell, it, it destroys them. And so uh, we, this is a, the really important medicine to help, uh, to help deal with that. Uh, you know how there's type one diabetes, there's type two diabetes. Uh, there's there's uh, now something that in the literature we call type three diabetes, uh, and that's Alzheimer's and dementia. There's five types of Alzheimer's, uh, and the number one type that we are exposed to in Canada and the US is vascular dementia. And of course, something like diabetes is gonna expedite that, make it even worse, and pretty well guarantee your life likeliness to develop the, the uh, Alzheimer's if you're a diabetic. So much so that literature refers to Alzheimer's as type 3 diabetes. And so that's going to be one really amazing thing that we cover. This is the medicine for it. And it's really easy, really easy to pick off a couple, uh, really easy to show to, to help this plant too, to help make sure that this one grows, to cause that panic necessary for this to create all of the seeds. So, so it's a really good thing to be a part of. It's a really amazing medicine to, to start to engage with. And there's a whole bunch here, look at all of it. There's tons. And so I'm just gonna pick off a couple more real quick. Bend it over, pop. <laughs> yes! Bend it over, pop. That should be good. I don't want to get too much. I don't want to have too much work to do. Uh, but yeah, just like that. This right here, this would easily, just a couple trees that I have here, like oh, not even a dozen trees. This would easily be enough mosmish, enough striped maple, because you don't really use a lot when you make the tea. The tea is really, really good though. So maybe this would be like six months worth for a family. And for somebody who is a really bad diabetic, who wants to mitigate those risks, 
uh, and uh, help heal the damage, the vascular damage that diabetes did, this would be like a really good treatment for somebody to have, uh, this is gonna be able to have a huge impact on their vascular health, just that. And I just got it just right there. <sighs> okay, so I'll see you guys later.